Welcome back to my channel for a detailed comparison of the new, brand new Leica SL3 versus its predecessor, the Leica SL2. Before going right into the topic, namely comparing the new SL3 against its predecessor, the Leica SL2, let me first of all thank my friends from Leica Switzerland and Leica Zurich who gave this pre-production sample to me already a week before the big influencer event at the Leica campus in Wetzlar. So I had really a lot of time to get myself familiar with the new camera, looking into the specification, shooting the camera and spending time with that newest member of the Leica system camera family. Let's start with the heart of any digital camera and that's the sensor and both cameras the new Leica SL3 and the Leica SL2, which I have here in my hands in chrome finish, both have a full frame sensor. So we are talking about 36 times 24 millimeter. But the resolution has been beefed up on the new Leica SL3, whereas on the SL2 we had 47.3 megapixel a CMOS sensor. We have now here a 60 megapixel CMOS sensor and it's a backside illuminated sensor that helps you a lot in low light situations. And you have also on the new Leica SL3, now the triple resolution, which we know from the newest rangefinder cameras from Leica as well as from the Q3. Very well done. This is a very natural upgrade. The triple resolution, which we already saw on recent rangefinder cameras from Leica and the Leica Q3 is for instance here in the menu, if you go here into the menu and we speak about the menu quite a bit in a moment, we have here the DNG resolution. So let's go into that. And then you see, we can choose between 60.3, 36.5 and 18.6 megapixel. And uh, the same you can do, of course, also on the JPEG settings here. So that is quite nice. It's something I'm familiar with from other Leica cameras, which we saw recently hitting the market. And of course, as I said before, it's a very natural upgrade to have this also here on the new Leica SL3. Dynamic range also has improved on the Leica SL2. We had 14 f-stops of dynamic range here on the Leica SL3. We now have 15 f-stops. I think that the sensor used in here is kind of the same as what we had in the Leica Q3. Since I do not have a lot of information about this new Leica SL3, it's second guessing, but I'm pretty sure it's a natural evolution having 60 megapixels in the newest rangefinders in the Leica Q3. And now it's finally here in the Leica SL3. And of course it has a one stop improved dynamic range in the same way as we saw it on the other newest Leica cameras. The image processor in the new Leica SL3 has been replaced too. So in the SL2, we had the Maestro 3. Here now we have the Maestro 4 image processor, which is something we've seen already in the new Leica Q3. And uh, again, it's uh, pretty clear to me that the sensor and image processing from the Leica Q3 have just been repackaged in this system camera here, which I say it the third time, is a very natural evolution of the SL system camera lineup. Let's now talk about design and the new Leica SL3 looks familiar, but is a really fresh update of the Leica SL2. And first of all, the camera body is a bit more compact. I tried to illustrate this by placing the Leica SL2 on top of it. And if you look carefully, you see, but you also see it in the dimensions in the spec sheet, that the new Leica SL3 has lost a little bit of volume and also lost a little bit of weight because the weight of the SL2 here was 838 gram without battery and the weight of the new SL3 is 769 gram without a battery. So we have lost a bit of volume, lost a bit of weight. That's of course appreciated because the camera body of the SL lineup always was a bit more on the heavy side. And here now we have it a bit more compact, a bit more lightweight. I appreciate that. Let's now systematically go over the camera bodies here and let's spot the differences. First of all, what's the same is the electronic viewfinder EVF. It still is an OLED viewfinder, 0.5 inch, 5.76 million dots, up to 120 frames per second. So you will not see any delays in that viewfinder. And that is exactly the same on both cameras. The next element I wanna cover is the LCD screen. And here on the Leica SL2, the LCD screen is fixed mounted into the camera body. You cannot tilt it out. And this is one unit. So the screen and the three buttons, so play, function and menu. Whereas on the Leica SL3, the screen now finally can be tilted out. So you can use this for waist level shooting or overhead shooting, what have you. 
very functional and uh, that's the reason why the buttons had to be separated from the LCD unit. So you have them here now directly mounted on the camera body. The engravings are still the same. We have play function and menu and on the technical specifications of the two screens here. So right hand side SL2, left hand side SL3. Not a spectacular upgrade, but a little bit of an upgrade because both screens are 3.2 inch backlight LED screens. But here on the Leica SL2, we have 2.1 million dots and here on the SL3, we have 2.3 million dots and of course the tilt functionality. So that is in my opinion, the larger upgrade. Will you see the difference in resolution? Very likely not. Will you feel in certain situations that you have now the option to tilt your screen? Yes that makes a significant difference. What Leica also changed is the on off switch. So here on the Leica SL2, we have the classical switch. This is on and this is off. On the Leica SL3, we have a more modern design here. This is a button here and if you press it, it switches the camera on. You also see it illuminated so you know that the camera is on and uh, there's also an animation going on. So if I charge the camera, for instance, this here becomes breathing in green color. So there's a little animation which I'm going to show now. Let me quickly demonstrate that charging procedure and the animation here. So when the camera is switched on, let's open the USB-C port here. Let's get this charger cable in. Then nothing changes. There is still a white illuminated LED ring around the on off switch. But if I switch the camera off, which I'm going to do right now, you will see that this starts breathing in a green color during the charging process. You see here it's coming. It's breathing in a very slow animation. And uh, by the way, if the camera is fully charged, it stops breathing and that is quite nice. Now there will of course be the classical Leica enthusiasts who say that on off switch is a much more classical element. So why did Leica not keep it? But there will also be the technocrats around the Leica shooters and that's me. And I love this more modern design. I love that LED ring, which is breathing green when it is charging. I like that new solution. It's clearly a thumbs up on the new design. Remaining on the rear side of the camera, we have here the diopter control. This is built into the electronic viewfinder. It's the same as what we have on the Leica SL3. No changes here. We have the same joystick we had before, multi-directional joystick here on the SL3 as we had it before on the SL2. And on both cameras, we have here this function button and the function button can be programmed. I think the standard default function associated with it is to switch between LCD and electronic viewfinder or the automatic setting where depending on whether you have your eye close to the EVF, it will activate the EVF, otherwise the LCD. And that is also a programmable function button. Let me quickly show that. But that was already programmable on the Leica SL2. So if I press and hold the button, I get a menu and now I can here, you see that's EVF switches to LCD and vice versa, but I can also go to other functions here and assign them to that function button. So that's basically the rear side. If you look at the top side, we have one more control wheel here and that is very convenient because on the Leica SL2, this space here was just wasted. I mean, clearly they could have placed here a control wheel, but it's just empty. Whereas here we have now a control wheel and that is very convenient. I'll very likely do a full tutorial of all the functions, all the menu settings of this camera in the near future. And then I will also show you how you can use this additional control wheel here, because now you have basically three of them. We have one here, that's the rear control wheel. We have one on the top and a second one on the top. Whereas on the Leica SL2, we had the rear control wheel, the top control wheel, and that's it. No more control wheels on that camera body. Let's now look at the ports. So on the Leica SL2, we had here, the USB-C port and that is the same on the new Leica SL3 and here we had ports for microphone, head check and so on and HDMI in the standard size, not mini, not micro HDMI. On the Leica SL3 that looks kind of the same but don't be mistaken on the USB-C for instance we have now the fastest available standard and this can go as fast as 100 megabit per second with a USB-3 cable. And uh, that will continue in a moment when we look at the card slots here. So that is nice. And then here we also have, again, headphone check. Uh, we have microphone check and HDMI in the standard size. So it's quite comparable, but under the hood, actually, there have been some upgrades going on, which are quite remarkable, in particular when it comes to USB-C, when it comes to data transfer, tethered shooting, what have you. Let's look at the card slots. So on the Leica SL2, we had two SD cards. So here's slot number one, here's slot number two, and here again we see a massive upgrade on the Leica SL3. 
if I go here into the card ports, first of all, that is interesting and remarkable to mention too. So here you can just slide it out and then the door opens for the compartment here. Look at that. Here you cannot accidentally do that. This card slot door is locked and you have to push that button and then you can slide it out, which is an additional protection for your cards and the robustness of your camera, of course. And then we have here two card slots. One is a compact flash express card slot. And uh, let me quickly show that here. So here the transfer speed when reading is 1700 megabit per second and writing 1550 megabit per second. And that is super fast, of course, and very likely also required because we can shoot with the Leica SL3 with very high video resolution. I will come to that in the course of the video. So let's get this card inside again. Let's make sure it sits firmly. All right, and then we have here an SD card slot. Let me quickly get that out. And here I typically use the Sony Tough series. I've shown these cards many times on my channel. Let me quickly get this a bit in scene here so you see this a bit larger. And that is also clearly one of the fastest SD cards you can get in the market, by the way, also one of the most robust ones, but is far away orders of magnitude from the speed in writing and reading from a compact flash express type B card. And that's why I think that Leica has built in this compact flash express card slot here because we will shoot with that new Leica SL3 with very high video resolutions and very high video quality. So that is appreciated, of course. All right, so that's the differences when it comes to ports and uh, card slots. There is one more port I quickly want to mention but not cover here. Again, you see on the Leica SL2 here that this side of the EVF is empty. Whereas here on the Leica SL3, we have a time code port. And that is something which uh, we've not seen on Leica cameras before and video shooters will appreciate that. I think the topic of time coding goes beyond that video, so I will skip it here, but at least I wanted to mention it for the sake of completeness. Both cameras have in-body image stabilization based on sensor stabilization, and it always used to be very effective on the SL2 and SL2S. And I will test out in the next couple of weeks how long I can shoot exposures handheld with that camera here if the IBIS is activated and I will try this out very likely with my beloved, also new, 21 millimeter lens here from the SL lineup. That's my most favorite wide angle lens. And if you have missed and not seen so far my review about that lens, look it up. I post the link down below in the info box. The ISO range has also been extended on the new Leica SL3. Let me quickly show that. Let's go into the menu here, into the status screen. Let's activate ISO. And then you see I can start all the way from 50, which is the lowest ISO value I can choose, up to 50,000. And then here is auto ISO mode. Let's quickly look into the same on the new Leica SL3. Let's go into the status screen. I come to that screen in a moment. Here is ISO. And then you see it starts from 50. I can also go to auto ISO and then it starts from 50 but does not stop at 50,000, but goes all the way to 100,000. Now, is that a meaningful setting? I'm not so sure. Maybe I make a video when I try it out, how images look if you shoot them with 100,000 ISO, but it's better to have it than not to have it. And that's why I think it is a natural extension. We've seen this on other cameras, even going beyond 100,000 ISO, although in only very few occasions, really meaningful, of course. Let's quickly look at the front side of the two camera bodies. So on the SL2, we always had here these two function buttons. So here's a lower one and an upper one. You can assign functions to these buttons via the menu. And the same is the case also here on the Leica SL3. And uh, you have here these two buttons and you can control them via the menu. Looking at the bottom of the cameras, you don't see a difference except the different finish here, chrome here and here black but there is a difference you only see if you get the battery out. And there is this ingenious mechanism. So I pull that lever here, battery cannot drop off accidentally. I give it another gentle push, then it comes out. And the SL2 had a capacity, let's get this right here. Here we go, of 1860 milliampere hours. And uh, that has increased now in the same way as we saw it on the Leica Q3. I've shown that in one of my videos. Let's get here the battery out. Again, same mechanism you see, gentle push, but here now we have 2200 milliampere, as you might be able to see here, 
2200 milliampere so increased capacity i appreciate that of course i started actually to equip my leica sl2s and also the q2 with these newer batteries because they are 100 compatible just with higher capacity so that's almost it when it comes to a comparison of design build and uh, features which you can see with your naked eyes and uh, there are a couple of more things i want to quickly mention which are not so obvious first of all both cameras are weather sealed in the same way it's adhering to the ip54 standard then we have on the sl2 hdmi 2.0 b and on the leica sl3 we have hdmi 2.1 and uh, i think what i also should mention is that inside in the wireless connections wi-fi here on the sl2 had a wi-fi according to standard 5 and bluetooth 4.2 and here we now have wi-fi 6 and we have bluetooth 5.1 all capable of higher transfer rates and higher speed. If you connect, for instance, the camera to the Leica Photos app, which by the way, also gets an upgrade very soon. I have some information here already about that upgrade and uh, it will be connect very fast via Wi-Fi and USB up to 35 megabit per second on Wi-Fi. And if you use a suitable USB-C cable, you will get this up in transfer rates up to 100 megabit per second. And that's of course absolutely gorgeous. We also get the Leica looks on the Leica SL3. And I think that's all I wanted to say when it comes to design and build. Let's now turn our attention to some inner values of the Leica SL3 versus the Leica SL2. And you see the design of the status screen in the menu has been completely re-engineered. And also the icons used, let me switch here to the menu. Let me also do this here. And then you see this is on the SL3, a more clean, a more consistent user interface, something I really appreciate. As I said, I will do a fully fledged tutorial on the new Leica SL3 very soon, very likely. And uh, you will get then a full download of everything that changed in the design of the menus. But just the appearance of these menus is completely different. Let me again bring up the status screen and let's put them side by side if you look at that. Look here, is completely different. And here I think in contrast to where some people might complain that a minimalistic on off switch has made place for a more sophisticated concept here, on the menu, this is actually more minimalistic. And as I said before, it appears to me a bit cleaner, a bit more consistent, a bit more intuitive in the way I can use it. Of course, if you're an experienced Leica SL2 shooter, you don't have to start from scratch again. Many elements are still the same. I illustrated already how you assign functions to function buttons. Let me do this again. Let me press and hold this one here. And then you get here the menu and you can choose here now, for instance, exposure metering. Now, if I press that button, let me first focus then you see I can have the different choices here for exposure metering. And that works exactly the same on the Leica SL3. So let's press and hold that button. Then you get here the menu and you can here go to all types of settings. Let's say exposure metering. First of all, focus here. We come to focus in a moment. And if I press now that button here, I get my metering options here. You see, I can choose them in the same way as I could work and operate my Leica SL2. So don't be afraid. There is nothing to learn newly from scratch, but the whole design, the philosophy of the menus has changed in a very positive way in my personal humble opinion. In my opinion, if I compare the specifications of the new Leica SL3 with the SL2, one of the most necessary and remarkable upgrades is the beefing up of autofocus. And on the Leica SL2 here, we have only contrast detection autofocus. And uh, that is typically slower than if you have contrast and face detection autofocus and face detection with pH. I'm not talking about face recognition and face with an F at this point in time. I come to that later. And that speeds up autofocus substantially. If you look at that, the face of Jennifer is immediately recognized. I'm hearing continuous autofocus and I have uh, face recognition switched on and immediately it snaps in. It sees Jennifer's face and you can also in the same way as I showed it in previous tutorials, on the Leica SL2. Toggle between the eyes if you want. As I said, a fully fledged tutorial is very likely necessary to bring all these features to the Leica community. But that is what it is. And having contrast detection and face detection instead of only contrast detection is a big plus for autofocus. And I was really feeling the gain, the boost in autofocus when shooting this camera in the last days. And just to give you some statistics, if you combine like you can now here, contrast autofocus with face detection autofocus, 
you get a five times faster and more snappy autofocus than what you had before on the Leica SL2. And uh, what also has been improved is the object detection. And that's interesting actually, because there is something going on here. Let me quickly go into the menu and let me go here to focus and uh, autofocus mode. And then you see we have here the tracking mode. We have all these modes, you know, from previous cameras, but with updated icons, as you see, spot, multi-field and all of that. And then you have here the famous eye face body detection where you can toggle between the eyes. And here we also have now, and that's still saying beta in this pre-production sample, animals and eyes of animals recognition. And that is something we have in Nikon, Canon, Sony cameras, is something which so far has not found a place in the Leica system cameras. I appreciate that it's there. I wonder if that beta setting is still there in uh, the cameras when they go to market. And typically Leica waits before a beta feature is fully completed before they distribute it to the camera owners. Here on this pre-production sample, I have it. Animals beta, what will be there is eye face body detection, of course. And that works like a charm, as you can see here. Look at that, very nice. Jennifer is always recognized, it's not even a human being. And the camera nevertheless knows that this is her face, that these are her eyes. So that is quite nice. And then of course, in the context of face detection, autofocus in combination with contrast autofocus, what I also should mention is that there is training going on from an artificial intelligence perspective on these object detection algorithms, which Leica is now doing in kind of the same way as other camera manufacturers. It's adjusting according to the depth of a scene and then can track in a three-dimensional way a face of a human being or if the beta is completed also the eyes of a dog if it's running towards you. So that is quite nice. There is a lot of improvement I see here on this new Leica SL3 and uh, I appreciate every progress in autofocus because so far the Leica SL system was always on the slower end when it comes to autofocus and object recognition and this will gain a significant boost with the new Leica SL3 and very likely something a lot of influencers on YouTube will jump on to demonstrate you how well this camera is doing. Whether it reaches already the level of a Sony A7R Mark V or a Nikon C9 or C8 I personally doubt it, but it's also not the main focus of Leica cameras to have the fastest autofocus in the world. It's more about the image quality, about the workflow, it's about the Leica color signs and all these type of things. But clearly with the SL2 I was able and I have videos on my channel where I did sports shootings and sports in action and this will improve now by about a factor of 5 in terms of speed on the Leica SL3. Very well done Leica, I like this a lot. When it comes to video resolution, the Leica SL3 also has significant improvements compared to the Leica SL2. Let's swipe here to go into video mode and then let's go here into the different settings we have here, video format and resolution. Let's go to this one first and you see up to 5K. I prefer actually cinema 4K, uh, up to 5K is the maximum you can do on the Leica SL2. That has been now beefed up on the Leica SL3. Let's go into the video mode by swiping. Let's go into the menu and then in the menu let's go to the settings for video profiles. And you see how more clean this menu is. I really like it. And then you see here for instance we have here on MOV, let's go into that here, we can program here different resolutions and the largest one we get here is 8K, then cinematic 8K, so here we have a significant boost in resolution. I wonder actually how Leica was able to make the volume, the dimensions of the camera even a bit smaller and nevertheless dealing with heat dissipation. So I'm curious to try this out, whether I can do a 30 minute video clip in full 8K or in cinematic 8K and if there is heat going on here in the camera, which warms up the camera and maybe the camera stops at a certain point in time recording. I'm not so sure. The influencer event is still ahead of us when I'm filming this, so we'll see very likely some demonstration of this at the Leica headquarter. But in any case, we have a higher resolution we can shoot here, up to 8K as I said. This camera is also ready to film in ProRes and uh, in different resolutions and uh, you know the video capabilities of this camera here, they are just spectacular given that you are dealing with Leica and Leica was not so much some years back in videography, a lot in still image photography and now they are really taking their game to the next level here with this new Leica SL3. I like it a lot and I'm also curious to try it out in the next couple of weeks. 
The last point I want to mention here is burst speed. And if I go into the status screen here and I go to drive mode, which is here, look at these new icons. <laughs> they really look very well. Then you have here the different speed modes for bursting. And you see, for instance, five frames per second, 12 bit. Autofocus is still possible. If you go further, then you lose the focus tracking and you have no longer autofocus. That means the last frame you shoot will focus at the same point as your first frame. But at least up to five frames per second in 12 bit, autofocus will still work. And that's kind of the last point I wanted to mention here. I hope you liked that video. I'm already a big fan of the Leica SL3. And as I said, I appreciate Leica Switzerland and Leica Zurich taking care of me and giving this to me already a week ahead of the influencer event so I could gain experience with that new camera. I like the design. It's a continuation of a very successful camera system. I like the upgrades in design. I like the upgraded inner values of the Leica SL3 and it will clearly be my personal camera to go to for many shooting situations. If you liked that video, don't forget to drop me a thumbs up. Stay tuned on my channel. There's always more to come. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and healthy and of course, Peace out.